If you've been drawing the figure for a while, you'll have come across the term gesture by now. And even though we all kind of get that it has something to do with energy and movement, I still often get the question from artists if there is this universally acceptable definition for what a gesture really is. And I think that this question gets prompted in them because they see different teachers explain and demonstrate gestures in different ways. And so they wonder, what within that range of good looking results is the actual gesture and what of that range is the artist's personal signature. So stay tuned because in this lesson we'll get to the root of what's at the core of a good gesture so you can create your own gestures with more confidence. And if you're excited for this lesson, give it a like and subscribe because this is definitely the place to be if you're interested in finally getting down to fully mastering drawing once and for all. If we haven't met yet, my name is Carolyn Peters and I live and breathe all things drawing. So if you're interested in finally becoming serious about mastering drawing yourself so you can create personally meaningfully artwork that is your own, look in the description below. There's a link where you can find out how to study with me. And for now, let's just start with this very lesson. So let's start this lesson out a little bit nerdy. Let's take a look at the word gesture and what it actually means. So it comes from the Latin word gestus and it means carriage, posture, or a movement of the body or a part of the body intended to express a thought or feeling. Like think about giving somebody a thumbs up, that's a gesture of approval. So let's keep this in mind as we take a look at what this means for us artists when we draw. When we artists talk about gestures, what we really mean by that is the essence of something, to capture the most important elements about the subject matter in the most simple way. And here are the key elements you need to look at to do so well. Element number one is the line of action or the lines of action. And that is to say, finding the big obvious connections between the major body parts. Which leads us to the next element that we should look at when we're drawing a gesture and that are the major body parts, meaning the three major masses. In our case, when we're looking at a figure, there's the head, the rib cage, and the pelvis. A solid gesture always represents what those three elements are up to clearly. And as you're paying attention to the three major masses, you'll also start noticing what's going on with a major angle. So that's the third element you need to pay attention to. In particular, the angle of the shoulders and the angle of the hip. Once you've successfully captured the line of action, the three major masses, and the angles that we just discussed, you got yourself already a really solid gesture, bare bones gesture. And if you have a couple extra seconds left, you can keep adding a next layer of information on top of that with some landmarks. So those are anatomical locations on the human body that you can imply over what you've already have and that will help orient your shapes three-dimensionally and assist the viewer in understanding if we're seeing a three-quarter view, a side view, or a back view. So here's some visual examples of what these bare bone gestures might look like. So on the left, you see the angles of the shoulders, you see what the three major masses are up to, and you have some lines of actions implied. You have some landmarks implied on those images that have the red line underneath them. So now you know the theory behind it. Let's see how this all shakes out when we apply it during our drawing process. All right, so the first thing I always look for in my gestures is if there is a line or a couple of lines of action. And remember, this is when we look for how the major elements connect visually. This is not really a line, like a, a contour line or anything like that. It's just how our eyes create a path between the major elements of this pose. So in this case, from the head down to that foot on the bottom right, that is my line of action. This is how I create like a visual flow between those major elements. That's what I begin with. Once I have that, I then go for some less dominant rhythms that describe the position of the legs and arms. And as you know, we want to have energy in those marks. More about that in the video in the top right corner about how to create more movement in your figures. So I'm tending to favor curvy marks. So at this point, I already have a solid bare bones gesture. I can tell what the pose is up to. And I only did that by paying attention to a line of action and some subsequent rhythm. So here in orange, just in case you were not sure what I was talking about, from the head to the thigh to the outstretched foot, that is my line of action here. 
And then next in blue, these are what I call secondary rhythms. So these are visual paths that might describe the edge of a limb, but they're basically just paths that my eye makes as it's taking in the pose. So what your gesture ends up looking like all depends on its purpose. If your purpose is to establish movement, you might want to go with what I just demonstrated. If the purpose of your gesture, though, is for you to practice reducing the figure down into its most basic anatomical elements, so you're using it as a practice exercise, you might end up with a look like this, where I am paying attention to the location of the three major masses. I'm being careful in how I'm placing my ovals for each of those three masses. And then I am reducing down the rest of the body into its skeletal structure and also adding on top of that some landmarks. So it makes for a very different look. It, and the look is different because the intention, the purpose of the gesture is very different from if I just want to create some movement. So me placing the sternum here and the thoracic arc and that little circle for the top rib circle is me memorizing where certain skeletal landmarks are on the figure. So now this drawing isn't being created for the purpose of having a beautiful drawing that I can share proudly with somebody else. Now this drawing is being created as a practice tool, a memorization tool. So this still counts as a gesture, but it's a gesture for a very particular purpose. So does it make it worse or better than what I showed you first? No, it's just different because the intention is different. So you ask yourself, what is it that you need to practice? What is it that you need to strengthen in your own gesture drawings? Do you need to get better at orienting the form? three-dimensionally well then practice some landmark positions or do you need to get less stiff in your drawings well then you need to practice your lines of action and your secondary rhythms so again for this type of gesture i'm practicing memorizing landmarks and as soon as i put place certain landmarks into my gesture it becomes more clear to the viewer what the point of view actually is so right now i have my three major masses but I don't quite know which way the spine is. As soon as I put the spine in, it translates how the rib cage is turned. It translates how the pelvis is turned. I can add the scapula on top. I can add that seventh cervical vertebra there, indicating the ears. All of those are landmarks helping me understand the orientation of the body. So let's come back to a more organic, a little bit more flowy way of creating uh, gesture drawing. So as you will notice, a lot of my gestures get started with the torso. And that is not haphazard, that is very intentional. The reason why I start with a torso is because most poses originate from the action in the torso. So that means I have to figure out where are the hips, where's the rib cage, how do they interact with each other, which side is stretched, which side is compressed. Once I have that then I either go into the legs or into establishing the head and arms. Arms are usually fairly later down the road for me, but again, that torso is very important because it is what determines what the rest of the body has to do to stay balanced. And let me make it very clear which part is which element in this very drawing. So in orange right now, that is my line of action. And to describe this line, I have two opposing C curves essentially going from that leg and then bouncing into its opposite into that torso to the outstretched upper arm. Okay, next, let's look at the three major masses. So you see this faint line here, right there, that's very faint in the actual drawing, but it is me indicating, and this is where the rib cage is. Remember, rib cage is one of our three major masses. So it's this edge, this edge, this contour of this actual drawing is a result of me looking at the rib cage. And then right here, you see that broad soft mark right there, that was me paying attention to where the pelvis would be. And you can see how in this pose, they're almost overlapping each other. The rib cage visually sits in front of that pelvis. 
And lastly, these blue marks are my secondary rhythms and they basically just become stand-ins, little placeholders for the limbs. Just saying, this is the angle of this limb, this is how long it is, which is the essence in its most simple way, right? So let's take a look at another pose. So here I'm establishing my line of action, which is connected, coupled with my torso. So I'm working out the hip placement as well as the rib cage placement. And that is usually linked with the line of action because as discussed, the torso affects what's happening in the rest of the body. And I established my head and look what I did on the head. That counts as landmark. So I'm establishing where's the eye socket, where's the nasal cavity. And that immediately tells us how much of the head we see from one point or the other. Me accenting this little point on the front of the hip right there, that was another landmark, it's called the ACES point. So here I'm going in and out of major masses, rhythms, landmarks, because when you have practiced these elements separately, you can combine them together and you get this kind of attractive looking result. Um, so far, a lot of the secondary rhythms that I've shown you were not necessarily outer contours. They're just kind of bendy wires in the middle of the limbs. Here, you're seeing me actually use edges to establish my secondary rhythms, like that calf or thigh. So to get to that essence of any given pose, we have to look beyond the details. We have to look beyond all the fun stuff and reduce it down to the most simple elements that we discussed already. Like in this case, here's our line of action again. It's visually nicely linking up. I've also accounted for the three major masses. And even though I might not see the entire egg, you can see me use portions of this egg for the rib cage to establish the top of the torso here. And you can see me using portions of this oval for the pelvis to help me establish the lower half of the torso. And of course I have my head, which is part of the three major masses as well. And then here in blue, just in case you wanted to see that again, this is what I consider secondary rhythms leading the eye through the rest of the body. Okay, let's go to a pose next where we can actually use the shoulder and pelvis angles more directly. Most of these poses so far have been side views and often that's not very clear for the shoulder angles. So let me establish a different pose. So as you can see, we have some strong rhythms establishing a line of action and a supporting leg and by the way um your torso how that is being carried by the weight bearing leg that is often where your line of action sits not always but often so just you know planting a little seed there for future poses that you might be drawing see how does the torso visually flow into the weight bearing leg maybe that's your line of action and then the balancing leg is often just a secondary rhythm. So here you see me establish a couple of these elements that we've already discussed so far. I'm locating my three major masses. I'm already orienting them with some landmarks. So if you look at that rib cage, I oriented it by putting the sternum there, by putting the thoracic arc there. If you don't know what these terms mean, you can look them up in an anatomy book. I'm sure I'll make some videos in the future about more anatomy stuff. Um, but they're basically bony areas on the body that help us understand how things are turned. Um, the belly button is a good landmark to use, even though it's not a skeletal landmark. Um, I'm using secondary rhythms to establish where the limbs are. And I'm using the principle of asymmetry to make sure that these lines flow nicely so that the viewer's eye doesn't get stuck on little areas like the hands. I try to reduce that down into very simple shapes. And I could leave the leg as simple as the one on the right, the bent one, where it's basically just two bendy lines describing what the leg is up to. That would be a bare bones gesture. But if I have more time, I can flesh that out into more of a shape where I look at the outer edges, not in a very detailed way, just in a very simple reduced down way. So again, let's see, here's our line of action for this pose the curve from the head into the torso, running into that straight line for that weight bearing leg. So again, always look how's the torso relating to the weight bearing leg. 
that might be your line of action. Next, I'm looking for the three major masses. And some of the portions that are describing the shapes for the rib cage, let's say, become part of the actual drawing, and some of them are just implied and ghosted in. So this is the actual shape of the rib cage, but I'm only using the left curve and a little bit of the right curve underneath the breast. The rest is kind of ghosted in. So here for the pelvis again, this is where the actual shape in its most simple way resides. And then I am just leaving a couple of those areas of that shape in accented for this drawing. Next, you're seeing me color in some of these landmarks that can be skeletal landmarks as well as soft tissue landmarks. And last but not least, here are the angles that need to be represented nice and clear. Now, if linear drawing isn't your jam yet and you're struggling with it, I recommend you work with mass first. So get yourself a compressed charcoal block or a compressed graphite block and get the gesture down like that. It's the same principle. You need to look, where's my line of action? Where are my three major masses? And instead of using lines to capture all of that, you use the broad marks of your charcoal and then you can wipe that off. And you saw this in the previous video and you can work on top of that with your lines and even work with the value of it and create a very handsome looking drawing. Now, of course, not only human bodies have a gesture that we can capture, anything has a gesture. Literally, a still life has a gesture. But I thought it would be fun to show you how this applies to animal bodies too. Same principle. You saw me begin with the line of action. Now I placed my three major masses. And now I'm filling out the rest of the drawing with some secondary rhythms. And once I have that, I become more specific with my shapes. And I try and locate some landmarks possibly. And and then I have myself a bare bones gesture for a dog. So I hope this has helped you understand why different artists' gestures look different, even though they seem to all be getting at the same thing. We all get at the major action of something. We all get at the big connections of something, but we arrive there through different means. Some artists like more landmarks, other artists like more flowy lines on the outer edges. It's pre personal preference. And now that you know the ingredients, you can come up with your own concoction. And if you want to have some extra help in figuring out how to finally master drawing and how to arrive at your own signature way of doing things, I invite you to watch the masterclass I have linked below. Have fun practicing and I'll see you next time. Take care.